Good morning, this is your Stats Sensei, Mr. Spensei, and this is our death packet for Classical Probability Unit 3A, and this will be problems 31 through 40. Suppose you toss a fair coin 10 times and it comes up heads every time. Which of the following is a true statement? By law of large numbers, the next toss is more likely to be tails than, than others. No, law of large numbers doesn't impact that. Law of large numbers says if we do it over and over again, we expect it. Uh, to get to the uh, the actual probability, which is 0.5. But uh, it does not, at law of large numbers does not go to a single um, toss. It goes to overall tosses. And since when we toss a coin, um, it, it, each toss is independent, law of large numbers does not impact individuals. It's law of large numbers is for large numbers, not for an individual. By properties of conditional probability, the next toss is more likely. No, all pro it's um, um, all probabilities are independent. So what's happened in the past will not impact the future. Coins actually do have memories. No, that's false. Either independent. The law of large numbers tells us how many tosses will be necessary. No. The law of large numbers said, hey, if we do it over and over again, we expect to be close to the theoretical. And so E, none of the above are our best statements. A mortgage company advertises that 85% of the applicants are approved. In a random sample of 30 applications, what's the expected number that will be turned down? Well, if 85%, 0.85 are approved, then one minus that or 0.15 are turned down but we have 30 applications. So our expected value would be 30 times 0.15, all right? So the expected number that we'd have turned down would be 30 times 0.15. This one would be the expected number of applications that are approved. All right, number 33, this one is tricky. Three fourths, we're gonna need to remember, remember that's there of college students change their major at least once. The reasons for changing and what they are are as follows. Okay, so we have a list of what they are and here's the, um, what they change to. Assuming reasons and what students change to are independent, what is the probability that a college student decides to change major based on an advisor's suggestion? All right, so we're gonna change major and it's basically an advisor's suggestion 0.10 to pre-professional. Well, they say they were independent, but there's one thing we left off. They had to decide to do it. Well, that's three fourths or 0.75. All right, so let's multiply those out. 0.75 times 0.1 times 0.2, and we end up getting 0 0.015, which happens to be A. All right, there are 8,253 men and 10,327 um, women at a state university. Let's go ahead and add that up. 8,253 plus 10,327 for a total of 18,580. Forty-three percent of the men and 27% of the women are business majors. What's the expected number of business majors in a random sample of 200? Well, if I take the 8,253 and I multiply it by 43, I find out how many men there are. So 8,253 times 0.43. So 3,548.8. Uh, And I'm going to go ahead and leave the decimal. It's actually 0.79. So that's how many men there are. And 27% of the women. So 10,327 times 0.27. Oops, 27 times 0.27. And I end up 2,788 0.29 are women that are business majors. So now I know how many men and women are business majors. 
And if I find add those up, I find the total number of business majors. And I find there's about 6,337 business majors that are men and women, 6,337. That's the total number of business majors. So if it's proportional, I can sit there and go, well, that's the total number of business majors out of the total number of students. So 6,337 over 18,580. That's business majors over total. And they want to know from the sample business majors over total. Well, our sample size is 200. So taking 200. Multiplying it by 6337, the number of business majors, and dividing that by the total campus size, I end up getting about 68.2. So we'd expect there to be about 68.2 business majors in that sample of 200. Which of the following is not a valid discrete probability distribution for the set X1, X2, X3? Well, this is just a complete way of saying, hey, we got three different things, three different X values. And remember, our probabilities have to be between zero and one inclusive, and uh, they have to sum to one. Well, one plus zero plus zero equals one. So one plus zero plus zero equals one. That's good. That's a valid because we're looking for not valid. So this is valid. So that's good. We can't be that one. One third plus one third plus one third. Well, one third plus one third plus one third equals one. So that's good. One half plus one third plus one six. One half plus one third plus one six. May not be good at fractions. Don't worry about it. You got a calculator. So one divided by two plus one divided by three plus one divided by six. Oh, that equals one. So that's also good. All right. Oh, I have a negative probability. I don't even have to add them up. Can't have a negative probability. That's not valid. So a magazine has 1,620 subscribers, of whom 640,000 are women and 980,000 are men. 30% of the women read the advertisements in the magazines, and 50% of the men read the advertisements. A random sample of 100 subscribers is selected. What's the expected number in the sample who read the advertisement? Well, how many people actually read it out of the 1620? Well, we have 640,000 times 30% of the women, so times 0.30, 640, 1, 2, 3, times 0.3. So 192,000 women read the advertisements. And of the men, we have 980,000 subscribers. And about 50% of them. So 980,123 times 0.5. So 490,000 of the men read it. And if we were to total those up, we end up with 682,000 reading it out of this. So let's set up a proportion. So 682,000 over 1,620,000. So this is, read it. This is my total. Well, my sample size was a sample size 100. Just my total. And we want to know how many read it. So 682,000 times the 100. So multiplying these two and then dividing by the total of the population divided by 162. Zero, one, two, three. And I end up getting about 42%. All right. 
Suppose a manufacturer knows that 20% of the circuit boards coming off the assembly line have a minor defect. If an inspector keeps inspecting boards until he comes up upon one with a defect, what's the probability you have to inspect at most three? Well, what's the probability that the first one is defective? The probability the first one is defective is 0.2. The probability that the second one means the first one was not defective, which is 0.8. But the second one had to be, so this is 0.2. Then we get to the third one, which is 0.8, not defective, 0.8, not defective, and 0.2. If I multiply 0.2, this, these two together, what's 0 0.8 times 0 0.2? 0 0.8 times 0 0.2, 0.16. And this is going to be 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.2, and that's 0.128. So this is the probability of the first one. This is probability of the second one. This is the probability of the third one. So it could be this or this or this. So let's add up those values. 0.2 plus 0.16 plus 0.128. And we end up getting 0.488. So our answer choice is C. Five managers and five employees are on a grievance committee. Grievance committee. A three-person sub subcommittee is formed by a random selection from the 10 committee members. What's the probability that all three members are managers? Well, we have five managers, five employees, and we need three members. Well, the probability the first one's a, man, a manager is 5 out of 10. But we now have one less person to choose from and only four managers. The next one, we have one less person to choose from, so we have eight and only three managers. So let's do that. 5 divided by 10 times 4 divided by 9 times three divided by eight. And if I press the math button on the calculator, which is right here, and press enter twice, I end up finding it's 112. So we basically just multiplied those probabilities. All right, this is a problem we haven't talked about. Um, first off, you need to know that a probability is an area. So which of the following is not a probability density function? Well, it has to equal one whole. So once again, we're dealing with that whole, the one whole. Well, this is y equals one. So if we have um, a graph, if we were to think of this as a graph, and I go, okay, here's our graph. There's my x's. This is from zero to one. And I go up one because that's what it said, y equals 1. Because remember, f of x is y. Well, what's the area of this rectangle? Well, 1 times 1 is 1, so this is a valid probability distribution because the area is 1. But we're looking for not a valid probability. So this is not it, because that's a valid probability distribution. The next one is 0.2. But let's look at that. Now our x's are 0, 1, 2, 3, four, five, but we're only going up 0.2. Well, 0.2 times five equals one. So this is, again, a valid probability distribution because this area right here is one whole. We're, con we're concerned about the area. So this is also a valid probability distribution. So this is good. So that's not our answer. And then we get count complicated. We have 0 to 4 and 4 to 7. All right. So I have to number this thing out. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Well, 0 to 4 right here is 0. 0.1. Well, what's 4 times 0. 0.1? Well, that's just 0.4, all right? 
And then it says from four, um, four to seven. Well, seven minus four is three. And we're going up to point two. Because this is point two. Well, what's three times point two? Well, that's point six. Point four plus point six, that's also one. So this is also a valid probability distribution because this part right here was point four. This part right here was point six. That summed to one. Valid probability distribution, not what we're looking for. Then we have y equals 2x. And so they give, they're giving us a try. And we're starting off at 0, and we're going to 1. Well, y equals 2x. That means y equals 2 times 0. That's 0. y equals 2 times 1. That's 2. So I'm going up 1. Here's 1, but I have to go up another one. That's 2. So this side of my triangle is 2. So here's the shape of my triangle. And triangle is base times height divided by 2. So 2 times 1 divided by 2. Well, that also equals 1. So it can't be this one because that's also a valid probability distribution. And finally, we get to the last one. First off, it has to be the last one by process of elimination. And I'm just going to tell you that it is. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and 3x. Three well, 3 times 0 is 0, so we're starting here. 3 times 1 is 3. So this would be 3 at this point. At 2... We'd be 3 times 2 is 6, so this would be 6. And then this would be up at 9. So the height of my triangle is 9. And remember, base times height divided by 2. So 3 times 9 divided by 2. 3 times 9 is 27. 27 divided by 2 is 14.5. Not it, because it had to be 1. So this one is my answer because that's not a valid probability distribution. All right, this number 40 is very similar to the one, one we've already done. A banking corporation advertises that 90% of the loan application it receives are approved within 24 hours. In a random sample of 50, what is the uh, number of loan applications that will be turned down? Well, turned down, if 90% are approved, then 1 minus that, or 0 0.10, are turned down. An expected value is NP. So in this case, N is 50, so 50 times 0 0.10. So our answer choice is B. All right. I think that wraps up our 40, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks for watching.